Hello everyone. I am Parth Anjal. I work with Red Hat India. And today I'm going to talk about OAuth system tests using LACO. So before beginning, I'll just like to cover what is LACO. And after which I'll be explaining uh, a little about Red Hat hyperconverged infrastructure uh, on top of which we run OAuth system tests and how do we recreate uh, the hyperconverged infrastructure using LACO. So what is LACO? LAGO is an ad hoc virtual in framework which can help you build virtualized environments on your laptop or your server. This can be for any use case and uh, it uses libvirt to create VMs. You can use this plugin to create the setup you need very easily. Be it for deployment, uh, development, automated testing, regression or for pipelining. We can divide testing into three broad categories, starting with unit tests, which is basically isolating the smallest functionality to perform a test on, to a functional test, which implies that uh, we need to test a specific component of the system, and uh, the system test, which as the name specifies, we need to test a whole system from end to end, starting from deployment, to its users to a point where we are getting the expected results or not. LAGO helps us to create tests on top of which we can run unit and functional tests. So LAGO basically is a system testing tool on which we can run unit and functional tests. Setting, uh, setting up a LAGO environment is rather simple. You can define your requirements through a LAGO init file which is written in YAML format. The init file contains two sections, domains and net. You can define your virtual machines or hosts you wish to replicate under domains and the network topology under net. When you add a NIC to a VM, it must be defined under here, that is under the net part of the YAML file and all the virtual machines need to be defined under domain. We can define a LAGO init file as per our requirement and simply run LAGO to create that environment. The environment is saved on a disk as a QCOW2 image and you can start, stop or pause images and destroy them as per your need or as your testing is completed. So now talk, coming to Red Hat Hyperconverged Infrastructure, or RAI for short. Uh, an example of system tests on LAGO is perfectly encompassed by the over system tests for RAI. A RAI setup requires a minimum of three hosts with nested virtualization capabilities so that it can run VMs on top of these three hosts. Now to test this setup, rather than using three different machines to reenact re this setup, we simply use LAGO to recreate our required hosts. On top of which, on top of these three VMs, we recreate the virtual machines which would have been in the hosts. Instead, uh, they are within a, another virtual machine. And uh, we can simply run this from a laptop or a small server which ensures that we do not use a lot of resource and we do not waste our valuable resource on testing and rather we, we have resource available for development. So our array setup basically uh, needs three VMs and on top of which on one of the VMs we have another hosted engine or Ovid engine VM which, uh, which can run tests. We generally have cluster storage at the bottom and on top there is overt. After setting up a mock RAI environment, we can run tests on the recreated systems. Over test system test is a framework written in Python, which helps automating these tests and covering multiple cases. It uses the Python SDK provided by Overt to automate the test cases and complete the test cases with minimum hardware requirements. 
the tests are broadly divided into two categories. One are the bootstrap tests. That are, that are the tests which are required for uh, during the setup or are the base, baseline setups. And on top of those are the functional tests. That is the expected result for when a setup is completed. We can also automate this Lago process by using overt system tests. We can just define a bash file, which here is represented by the control.sh. And <clears throat> sorry about that, uh, so, which is represented here by the control.sh. And in, in here, we can also define a repo sync file, which basically ensures that you download the needed packages only and you save space by excluding the packages which are not required or which are not necessary. So you do not waste bandwidth on downloading packages every time you test. And the reposing file actually downloads the packages and stores them on your local system or your local server so that you do not have to download them again and again and rather only uh, once before starting the test. And in case you happen to delete them, then again it will download. After downloading the repos to your local system and deploying the VMs, you can copy the repos to the VM. As discussed earlier, Lago init file is used to define your VMs and network topology. And then uh, coming to how specifically Rai is set up. Firstly, we have to create three VMs. And after that, we set up passwordless SSH. Because we use Ansible in the background to automate uh, array deployment, so we need a passwordless SSH setup between all the three hosts and, and the engine. Then using Ansible, we deploy the setup on top of these three VMs. Firstly, it creates cluster storage setup. Then it deploys the overt hosted engine. And then it adds this hosted engine VM to one of the host VMs. Once the setup is complete, the pre-checks are done. It is followed by the bootstrap tests, which is run by overt system test or OST for short. Once the bootstrap tests are completed, then it runs the functionality tests. And uh, once that uh, result is completed, it gives us a all good or all test pass sign or else it will tell us where the test is failing and what error exactly is it facing. And we can also use Jenkins CI to pipeline, pipeline these tests to run automatically at a regular interval or every time a patch is pushed. So we have our Jenkins set up for overt. This is for multiple projects and uh, not just try or a hyperconverged infrastructure. This is for rev over, over testing, only hosted engine testing, and even for other components. So here you can see at the bottom on the last four tests had failed and uh, we, have de we were trying to debug after these failures. And before that it was regularly passing. Here we can also see that uh, we have multiple parameters. We can build it with uh, a custom repos or we can simply rebuild the last. And uh, if, you, if you can see the time, you can see that we have triggered it for every day at a particular time. And uh, whenever the test is complete, it triggers an email to everybody whether it fails or pass. So as I was mentioning, uh, Jenkins can be done using custom parameters as well. In case you wish to test for a particular patch on an updated custom repo, you can directly mention your uh, get it patch over here and uh, provide the right path. It will test for that patch. You can create custom repos and add it over here. So thank you so much for your time and patience. In case you wish to read more about Lago or OST, you can follow these two links. If you wish to contribute towards OVERT, OST, OVERT system test, you can continue to this link or this link where it can basically guide you how to start OVERT. Sorry about that.
you can uh, check out the over dashboard over here and you can read about Red Hat Hyper Conversion Infrastructure over here. So now I'm going to show a small demo for uh, uh, how to deploy OST uh, using Lago, how to deploy Hyper Conversion Infrastructure using Lago specifically. So as you, uh, I am on uh, a server on which I have installed the required packages for OS uh, for OST, and uh, right now I'm I'm starting a mock session uh, so that it's easier to deploy on top of mock. You do not have to do this, but in case you feel like you can use a mock session. Uh, right now the mock, as you can see, it's installing EPL seven and uh, it's going to take some time so let's skip ahead uh, to once it is done and i will show you how to deploy ost with the, sm uh, the simplest of so now as you can see mock runner is complete it's uh, running we'll just uh, go to the directory where we have our tests and run the command run underscore su dot shell uh, followed by the suit which we wish to run as i am planning to run etc basic suit master i am going to deploy that and simply press enter ansible will do its work uh, shell script will uh, shell script firstly will start and it will find if the environment is there if there is a pre-existing environment it will ask you to clean it uh, in case not then it will look for the repos which are downloaded locally here you can see uh, the lago init file is available and uh, the lago init file our uh, description uh, can be seen here how we have uh, described three different machines and uh, after that we can see that it's downloading the required uh, packages and now it has it is creating disks and uh, uh, after for each vm you can see what all has passed and here we can see that uh, engine vms is success so it's now just uh, deploying all the vms this will again take a little while in case this is your first run it might take even longer since uh, it has to download the required repos and store it on your local system first and then it will copy it to the vms after they are created so i will though even though i have the repos it will still take time to spin up the vm images so i'll just uh, stop the recording here for a while and uh, once my environment is deployed i will start it again and i will show you in case uh, something important comes up in between <clears throat> now we will do a quick uh, code walkthrough you can get the project from gerrit.over.org kind of projects you can look for over system tests and you can clone the project from here after cloning the project, if you open, I will I will actually uh, particularly look at the Ethi Basic Suit Master. And uh, in case you feel like going through something else, you can. They are uh, based on the same concept. So firstly, here's the most important file, which is the control dot sh file. As you can see, firstly, it copies the config file and then it copies the repo file into the VMs and then it deploys our environment on top of that. And uh, under here you can see that it's uh, copying from your local uh, run to the VM stem. And from here, you can again see from your local where it says the repo sync file, it is uh, copying it to the vmztc vm repos. Now it is uh, setting a password SSH, which was the initial step required to allow Ansible access, Ansible root access. Then it's running the automated deployment through Ansible itself. And uh, after that, uh, it starts running the test, which is the test suit which we have. And to run that, we need uh, to install pip and we need to install uh, libguestfs. 
and we need to install a few uh, uh, a few other things which, which are mentioned in the rpms which is available and from there we just start running the test which we have listed in one of the files which, which i will show you again and you can just uh, run test it goes through each test in case any test fails uh, the test stops there and reports that uh, it has failed under uh, execute playbook we have actually defined how we are going to automate the ansible deployment uh, using shell script we just provided the path under which uh, ansible uh, hc ansible hyperconverged ansible deployment files are, are available and uh, we have provided a path to the playbook uh, we have saved a copy of playbook in this folder which we copy to the vms before the execution and uh, you can see this is the host uh, inventory file and uh, here host zero and other variables are replaced according to the deployment <clears throat> uh, this is the lago init file uh, which you can see firstly we have defined the domain and uh, under domains first is engine under engine we have defined nick where we have provided the network interface for this and again we have defined three hosts as that's what we require for our deployment and again for those we have defined a network and these are some file required uh, this is this is a file required by uh, he deployment is required for he deployment this is the repo file uh, which we save and we download these repos locally on our system and then copy them there are the various repo files we need and this is the setup uh, which is required to do pre pre ansible inst uh, pre ansible run so that uh, there are no interruptions here we are installing the basic packages needed on the host uh, which is ansible cluster ansible roles over hosted engine setup over ansible repositories and ansible engine setup uh, you can enable them through these repos you can include them in the repo and then you can install them from here here we have the templates available since we are running etsy basic suit master on top of 82 so we use the 82 base and similarly you can have a look at other suits also there's basic suit available for running uh, just high, uh, HE engine and then there is an HE basic suit also available. Uh, now we have some more uh, the major tests uh, which we have divided for hyperconverged uh, basic suit are into two parts. One is the bootstrap test. This is the uh, tests which are done to check that the deployment has been successful and uh, there are no errors to the deployment so we perform first our uh, basic functionality test and then we have a basic sanity test uh, which performs uh, other tests uh, which are that is a, a day two tests as we like to call them that once your uh, deployment is successful uh, we have to create new vms add new networks whatever will be required to maintain the setup so we have these tests uh, defined over in these two files, which are basically uh, Python files, uh, which use um, Python libraries and uh, over test SDK API to run the tests. As you can see some of the test examples here, we are trying to check that the host IPs uh, uh, are available. We are trying to check that the hosts are in data center and then we are trying to uh, restart the engine and wait for the engine. Now we are trying to install cockpit over it, which is basically a UI plugin. We're trying to add storage domain. And then we are trying to add uh, different storage domains here. And uh, all of these tests are basically run over here at the end, which is through the test list. Uh, there, there, there is a particular instance in the control file which runs these tests. As you can see, we have uh, we are collecting the 
test list and uh, 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 from each suit we are passing the test in uh, from test scenarios and we are running each test and uh, once these test passes then we move forward so these are the tests which we perform first and uh, followed by these tests over here a uh, few of the tests in basic sanity suit are adding a new blank vm adding disks to vm uh, adding a direct uh, direct learn uh, snapshotting uh, snapshots uh, adding vm templates running vms migrating vms and uh, again uh, live merge snapshot and so on and so forth other than that, we have a VARS file, which basically defines how many hosts we need. If you look at our Lago file, uh, we do not redefine the uh, number of hosts as the, as the hosts are similar. And the only difference in these hosts will be the host uh, name uh, and uh, the IP assigned to them. So we just have defined a small variable over here, which counts our host. In case uh, any day we wish to do a six node deployment, we can change this and do a six node deployment as well. So now uh, that uh, it, uh, my environment is deployed, I'll just quickly run through what all has happened. As you can see, this is Ansible log. So uh, since we're not discussing that, I'll just not deep dive into it and maybe you know show one part or two. Now, since uh, I think last we left uh, from here at, I cannot find it, sorry. Oh, yeah, we left at bootstrap, bootstrapping uh, the three VMs. And then we are initializing, we have saved the uh, nets, we have saved the VMs, we have saved the environment. And now we are initializing the same. Uh, we have uh, started the VMs over here. And then we have copied the files. Uh, as you can see, we are copying the VARS file. We are copying the repos uh, over here to all the three VMs. Now it uh, basically outputs the Lago init file again. And from here, it starts the uh, deployment process. And uh, for the deployment process uh, is a part of RIV or a hyperconverged infrastructure. So we have added the public uh, SSH key to that one host from which we are deploying so that there are no Ansible issues. And now uh, you can see that uh, this, this is the uh, starting of the Ansible log, where firstly we are trying to go through some pre-flight checks. If there is enough space on var log, if there is space on var, and uh, in case we pass certain size, we are we are checking for the block size, and there are many such tests, which uh, then we deploy Gluster, and after that we start uh, once Gluster is successfully deployed after a bunch of steps, we go on and deploy Hosted Engine. Uh, hosted Engine and Gluster use two different uh, Ansible's. Uh, cluster is deployed using cluster Ansible and Overt Engine is deployed using Overt Ansible. Now these are the Overt Engine Ansible processes. I'll skip through them and directly go to the success uh, of our deployment. And here, now after uh, successfully creating the deployment, uh, we do some testing to ensure that the deploy uh, environment is created properly and there are no problems with the environment. We are running the bootstrap tests first. As you can see, all the tests have passed successfully. And then uh, we collect the uh, details, the logs and uh, uh, related uh, logs in a file. And then we run the basic sanity tests after which we again collect the logs and once all the tests have passed, we get a success message. In case something fails, we get a trace back for that. And we uh, also get the related logs. And we can we can always check, uh, check our deployment using version list. You can see that we have three VMs running. 
and there is another vm inside this vm so we are using nested vm uh, nested virtualization let's try to log into a vm and check uh, for a few things we'll just see uh, is Gluster deployed and how the hosted engine is running? We use Versh console. Uh, the password and uh, login is defined in the files. And uh, let's quickly run a Gluster v status. You can see that there are three hosts which are running three different volumes, and all the volumes are up. Uh, the hosts are connected. And let's take a vm status uh, hosted engine vm status sorry uh, one second yes. now we can see that the vm is up and it's running on host zero right now and uh, so we can also interact with the setup it's not that we have to do the tests automatically we can do st uh, we can in, uh, do the steps manually as well and in case you have a web UI, you can access that through, uh, if you are running it on your local machine, you can access it on port 8443. And in case you are running on, on a remote machine like I am, you can always SSH tunnel into it. Uh, so here is the command to tunnel, which is uh, SSH minus L 8443, followed by the IP address of your engine vm or your ui uh, wherever your ui is deployed by the port on which it is deployed for me as the port was 443 i have mentioned it here and the username uh the the machine name on which it is deployed once uh, this is successfully connected you can log on to the uh <clears throat> to the machine using uh, this particular URL, which is HTTPS localhost 8443. So thank you for your time and thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope I was able to give you an insight upon on Lago and OST. Uh, if you have any queries, please do get in touch with me. And uh, again, thanks a lot for your time. So thank you very much, Parth. Uh, would you like to join us for some questions and answers? Thank you for an excellent presentation. I don't hear any audio from you, Parth. I think you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. So uh, does anyone from the audience uh, have any questions? I know David made a couple comments. So thank you for all the links, Parth. That'll be very helpful to those who are in the audience. And I'm going to place a link to your video as well in the chat. Sure. Thank you. Uh, did you want to make any comments? Uh, so in case anybody wants to understand, uh, if I was unclear at any point, or uh, it was, I think it was a little confusing because uh, my demo was not very well rehearsed was just, uh, I, I sort of did it in a hurry. So in case somebody wishes to get a deep type, they can contact me um, offline on my email ID, I just paste it in the chat and reach out to me. And in case you would like to contribute to both OSD or uh, even uh, Cockpit Overt, I, I contribute towards Cockpit Overt UI as well. So in case somebody is interested, contributing towards either of those uh, you can reach out to me and i can help you getting started yeah and thank you for the your contact information um all that information is great and they'll definitely help people get going and over it obviously is a very important pro uh, project so there's a ton of folks that are depending on overt and the uh, kvm back end and it's extremely important to the open source community in general one of the most interesting things about uh, Overt and KVM is that you can do something a lot of the other virtualizers can't, which is uh, cross-processor virtualization. So when you're prototyping new solutions like RISC-V or ARM, whatever you're doing, you can virtualize those very effectively on x86 if that's what you have. So 
Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of Obert, as I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> yeah, so. but I, I don't have much experience with Obert as such. Like, yeah, I have, you know, I haven't been with their hand up down like this. Excellent. Well, well, thank you very uh, much. Then I, I guess uh, we we certainly appreciate your time, and that was an excellent presentation. Thank you.